So in this uh, set of videos, we're going to be building on what we've already done with stresses in soils. Um, particularly where we're going to focus on what the stress, the interesting things the stress convention can tell us about uh, properties within soil. And then we're going to be connecting that to another type of test for deriving strength parameters in soils, the triaxial test. So imagine um, I wanted to understand what the stress conditions were in this sheet of plexiglass that's in front of me. And I, I picked out an element, let's say a part of this plex plexiglass sheet, a small element of material, and I wanted to know what the, uh, the vertical and horizontal stresses were acting on that small element. Well, let's just blow it up here. So we'd, in our stress convention, it might look something like this, where we'd have uh, normal forces running through the plexiglass sheet. And we also have shear stresses um, acting um, uh, uh, on those normal, uh, normal planes. Well, what I've just picked out is really an arbitrary um, orientation, right? So the, the, the reference plane that I've picked out here is really just uh, vertical and horizontal. But that might not be the, um, the reference plane for maximum and minimum stresses. You know, I might be more interested in understanding uh, what reference plane um, the maximum and minimum stresses uh, were, ha were uh, happening. And that, you know, that might be in you know, this direction or you know, this direction. So the whole range of reference planes that we can, uh, we can turn this, this square through um, to try and understand what the stresses um, are within those different reference planes. So, but as long as I knew the, um, the normal stresses and the shear stresses acting within one reference plane, and I knew the angle that I wanted to rotate the, uh, the reference plane through to get a new reference plane, then I could work up what the normal and shear stresses are acting on that new plane. Um, and I've put a link to a video which shows you the, 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 the mathematics behind doing that. But essentially what pops out of those, those mathematics is a, an equation for um, a normal stress acting on a, 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 a new reference plane. Um, and that's equal to uh, one half. So what comes out of this, uh, this proof is an equation for normal stress acting on a new reference plane. Um, and that just depends on the, um, the normal stresses acting on the old reference plane, uh, the angle through which you, you want to rotate the, uh, the, the, the reference plane. So if, I, if it's in the vertical and horizontal direction here and I want to rotate that through uh, by theta degrees, that's what goes into here. And then I just need to know the shear stress acting on this, this old reference plane. Um, and through the, uh, that information, I can work out what any stress is um, for a given um, change in the, the angle of the reference. So the, the proof also spits out an, um, uh, an equation for the shear stress acting on this new reference plane. And that's equal to this. So our shear stress, again, depends uh, on a new reference plane, depends on the normal stresses acting on the old reference plane, the shear stress acting on the old reference plane, and the angle of our new uh, theta, the angle of our new reference plane. So it's just three unknowns, and we can get from that these two, um, the, the, the shear stress and the normal stress acting on any reference plane that we choose. And what we can do is plot two graphs where we um, analyze what the outcome is, for a given set of um, uh, normal stresses and changing the and shear stress and changing this this um, this angle of rotation. So if I plotted those two equations onto two graphs, um, a graph of shear stress, um, and if I kept the uh, normal and shear forces act, um, in one reference plane constant, and all I changed was the angle, then I would get a graph that looked something like this, where I would have a peak. Um, and a trough. And I, I could also do the same for the, um, uh, for the normal stress, where I plotted the normal stress against this angle of, uh, of rotation. And again, I'd get a similar, um, similar graph. So if I took this, this bottom graph of normal stress and I rotated it um, until the vertical axis here was horizontal, um, 
So it went from a situation like this um, to something like this, where I now had the normal stress acting on the x-axis and the angle acting on the y-axis. Um, let's draw that up. I'd end up with something that looks like this. And if I then plot both of these onto, onto one axis, or one set of axes, um, where I had my normal stress acting on the x-axis, in my shear stress acting on the y-axis, uh, what, I, what I would be able to generate would be a circle. So a circle where the, the angle um, around through the circle would be equal to theta. What we're left with is what's known as a, a Mohr's circle of stress. Um, and I've just moved the y-axis over here because in solid mechanics, we don't get uh, negative uh, normal stresses. Uh, all of our normal stresses are positive, they're compressive. In other engineered materials, um, uh, that's not the case, and you do get negative uh, normal stresses. Uh, but this is more appropriate for soil mechanics. So this tells us quite a few interesting things. Uh, the first is if we go back to the, uh, the two graphs here, um, we have, um, depending on what angle we're looking, or what angle of our reference frame is, uh, we get uh, maximum and minimum shear stresses and maximum and minimum normal stresses. So those might be quite important um, if we're uh, worried about how strong our material is in shear or in uh, normal stress. Um, so if we want to know what the maximum and minimum are. Um, it also tells us that at some point we get, um, uh, we get points of zero um, shear stress and, and zero um, normal stress. Now those points of zero shear stress also correspond to the points of maximum normal stress. And that's how we define what's called the principal stress axis. So the principal stress axis are um, the axis where we have zero shear stress and maximum or minimum normal stress. So the axis of principal stress correspond in this diagram to these two points here where the circle intercepts the x-axis. So the Mohr circle of stress tells us something really quite interesting, and that is that the maximum shear stress, which is up here, um, is a function of the distance between these two points. You can imagine if I reduced the difference between the, the, these two points here, the, reduced the difference between the, the maximum principal stresses, um, and I, let's say I reduced this down to here, what I would get is a circle that looked like this. Right? And the maximum shear stress that that um, material experienced would be much less than what it originally was. So you can see that the difference between these maximum principal stresses are really quite important, and that's what gives rise to shear stress within a material. Now, we can label these maximum, uh, these principal stresses up as sigma 3 and sigma 1. They're given the, that usual notation. Um, sigma 2 um, is important when we're thinking about um, three dimensions. So at the moment, we've only got two dimensions on this convention. If we're thinking about in the ZZ direction, going in and out of the board, then that's, um, that's uh, what sigma 2 is. It's called the intermediate um, uh, principal stress. But in this case, it's sometimes it's, it's useful just to think of two here with the maximum and the minimum. So we only need two parameters to describe a Mohr circle. And those, those two parameters are where the center point of that circle is and what the radius of the circle is. Um, and that's, uh, those two parameters are called stress invariants. Uh, we're specifically two-dimensional stress invariants. Um, and the first one, T, is equal to the radius of the circle. Um, and, that's, and that's equal to the maximum minus the minimum uh, normal stresses um, divided by two. So, um, and then the other, the, uh, uh, the center point of the circle, S, is equal to 
the average stress. So I should uh, point out that actually what we're talking about in, in all of this, uh, these situations is uh, effective stress. So that's what we're interested to do uh, when we're thinking about soils. So all of this is actually effective stress. Oh, sigma prime. 